Hey, what's up, guys? Clef here. The Dual Sense Edge. Now, I've already made a hands-on, very chill, discovering the controller video, uh, which I'll probably put up there. I wanted to have an official review because to me, it doesn't make sense to talk about this controller without putting it head to head with another product, which I was always very curious and interested in, which is this right here. Now, I already have challenged your curiosity. I'm not about to challenge your intelligence. I said in the thumbnail that this is not a DualSense controller, and in fact, it isn't. If we look at the DualSense Edge, we already know that one is different. You have extra features in the back, and usually a regular PS5 controller looks exactly like this one. But if we look at the back, we also have four paddles, which is one of, at least for me, the more appealing features of the DualSense Edge. It's not quite the same, but it has a lot of similarity. Now, before we go any further in the video, these metal sticks have nothing to do with the Extreme Rate Rise 4 kit. That's just me that made this change because I thought, you know what, it's opened. Might as well, because I always like those sticks. I have them since forever. Anyways, some of the things I want to highlight in this review. First, using the DualSense Edge on PS5 and using the DualSense Edge on PC. And then how does it compare to this as an option? And then ultimately wrapping this review as to if I recommend either or and what would be your best options. Starting with this controller, so the DualSense Edge. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about it because I've already done that in my hands-on, but we will quickly go over all the features that it has. First and foremost, it has more texture on certain parts of the controller, namely the trackpad. You have the possibility to change how much you need to push your stick down for it to actuate. You have two extra buttons, and you have these ones which actually serves to change your profiles very quickly on the spot. But one of the big differences with this controller, the software that Sony brings to their PS5. As far as the haptic on this controller, they are the same, speakers are the same. However, I really took a lot of time testing this. You feel the haptics a bit more. And I think it's not because the motor is different inside, but rather because the shell is slightly different that it will carry the, the the vibrations a little better, but ultimately the hardware that is being used is the absolute same. Adaptive triggers as well are identical. And then you have the possibility to change those sticks and you have the possibility to remove the actual analog unit to replace it if ever it drifts or anything like that. It also comes with an extra carry case that is pretty nice and a little lock to transform it into a wired controller if you want. Overall, it's a very, very nice controller, but I will say it outright, I don't believe it's worth the asking price. And the reason might surprise you, the PS5 DualSense is already so good. And there's very little that this controller does to differentiate itself in terms of just giving you that premium experience. Yes, you have the software, which is probably the biggest aspect of this controller. I don't see why that is worth $200 US. If Sony was to release the software, the software would be 20 bucks. You would easily cover 70% of what this controller offers to make it unique. Who would want to buy this controller? Well, anyone that is like big, big, big pro players. And that's the thing with the Edge, where the Microsoft Elite controller to me, I find is appealing to everyone. This controller really is targeted for pro players. You can change the curve on your sticks, how the analogs are gonna move. There's a lot you can do in the software and it's pretty impressive and it's pretty good. And the ability to change profile, if you have a profile that is specific to Call of Duty and then you drop Call of Duty to move to App Apex Legend, you could easily do that with a click of a button, hit your design shortcut button, and then boom, you're set. You just change from one to the next. So in that regard, it's pretty impressive. But the truth is, most people will not bother setting all those features on that controller. Now, the next thing I wanna to touch on is playing on the PC. As far as features, I'm glad I didn't do the review right from the get-go because it actually evolved since I received it and now. At first, it didn't work on PC. It would work on Steam because Steam is able to input its drivers on top but as far as the sony drivers at first it didn't work on pc at all including with sony's own games i'm guessing some updates happened since because it does work now if i am to use it on pc that is using steam games or sony games with removing steam overlay input it will work just fine the microphone works 
the speaker works as an output, but at least for the time being, it doesn't work in games that offers you specific audio to go through the speakers. For example, if you play uh, Sackboy, you, some of the movements, some of the things happening in the game will come out only through the speaker. It will not do it with this controller at the time being, but seeing how quick Sony fixed a lot of the use case scenario on PC, I'm convinced that they will fix the speaker. It's just a matter of time. It's a good PC controller. Beyond a regular PS5 DualSense controller, it is not a great controller in my opinion. And the reason is, at this point in time, and it's very unlikely that Sony will offer this anytime soon, is we do not have the software to make any changes to the controller. So essentially, you have to go on PS5, make the changes, save a profile onto the controller, and then once you're playing elsewhere on PC, for example, and you wanna change that profile, it's gonna work just fine. But if you don't have a PS5 to do that, you cannot take advantage of the extra features of this controller. You cannot tweak through software the analogs, you cannot map extra buttons, you cannot change the curve of your analogs, all things that you can do with the software on the PS5, you can only do it there at this point in time, you cannot do it outside of the PS5. So that's very important to know. If you're a PC player and you've been enjoying the DualSense because it is a great controller and you're thinking that this is the controller to upgrade your experience, 90% is gonna be the exact same as a PS5 DualSense. You will not get any benefits, and it really differentiates itself from a driver level than the regular DualSense. So you might find discrepancies like it is the case with the speaker right now. That doesn't mean that it's a bad controller by any means. It's actually a very, very nice controller. It's just the asking price that I'm having an issue with. There's no point to, there's no way to justify going from this to there for 200 US dollars. But say there are some features that you're interested in, for example, the extra buttons. Well, as we said in the beginning of this video, with the Rise 4 kit from Extreme Rate, you can actually make for a very on the fly solution. And this, in my opinion, becomes very interesting. One of the key things that you may have noticed is the back panel has to be changed. And Installing the back panel from Extreme Rate, one of the things that I was very curious about is the feel of it. And I have to say, the feel happens to be, in my opinion, superior to what you have on the PS5 DualSense Edge and what you have on the regular controller. Especially if you have sweaty hands, the grips on this controller is just phenomenal because the material is slightly different here. This carries the vibrations way much more. Of all the three controllers, a regular one, the DualSense Edge, and this, it's like all those little dots just carry the emo carry the sensation so much more. Nice. There is a little bit of concern on will it go away over time, right? Because it seems to be a little bit of a soft rubber. I wouldn't be surprised if after one year, two years of use, it rubs off a little bit. And then at that point, it probably wouldn't be as comfortable. But unfortunately, with little time that I've had this, I'm not able to, you know, speak about how, if that's gonna happen, yes or no. The buttons, they click very nicely. I would say that the click here is slightly more satisfactory, but it's very, very, very close. The reach is good. The reach is great, if you wanna see what it looks like. But one of the most amazing features here with these buttons, and by the way, this is the metal kit. This is a metal kit. I don't know about the plastic kit, but I think I, if you were to get one, I would recommend the metal, and I'll say why in a minute. One thing that is amazing is the ability to change the buttons on the fly. So what you do is you just push the little button here, you hold it, once it's lit up, like so, you hold the button and the button that you wanna map it. So for example, if I wanna map on the four button, if I wanna hold X, so I'm gonna hold both at the same time and you're gonna see it flash. And when it flashes, it means that it's mapped, so you just get out and boom. So now whenever I push this button, it's gonna do X, just like the front button. And if you're okay with soldering, which I strongly recommend, and it's very easy, it's a very easy process, you can map the trackpad, you can map L2, R, you can map every button essentially, except start and capture. It's the only two buttons that you cannot map. Everything else you can, but depending on how comfortable you are with soldering, 
you might gain or lose buttons that you can configure. I did capture the installation, so I'll cue a video so that you guys can have a look as to what it looks like. It took me a little over an hour to install. It was kind of a fun little project. Honestly, I would recommend it to anyone. It wasn't hard. Uh, in terms of soldering and everything, I would say that it's anywhere between easy and medium uh, in terms of difficulty. I've had much harder and I've had easier as well. It's kind of, you know, in between, but way closer to the being easy. And I mean, I was expecting this to be good, but it's much better than I expected it to be. Because not only does these little dots convey haptics, and I'm a I'm big on haptics. I love haptics. To me, it's such a, a great way to help you get immersed into the games that you play. I know some people just turn it off. Uh, for me, it's a big feature. The haptic on the DualSense 5 FS is absolutely amazing, as we all know. And one thing that I find impressive is on the DualSense Edge controller, you hold it, the haptics will not really carry itself through these buttons. And I think it's the way that they are connected to the frame of the controller. It's a very small connection, very sturdy, it's magnetized, and it makes it so that the vibration do not carry through the buttons. Whereas here, again, <laughs> you would think it's a feature. I don't know if Extreme Raid even considers this, but especially, I don't know for the plastic kit, mind you, but for the metal kit, those buttons, they vibrate with your controller. It's so nice. Like it really carries the haptic component through. And so I'm glad I waited and I'm glad I wanted to have this kit before doing the actual review of this controller because really, if you're buying the DualSense for PC gaming and you're comfortable with installing this kit, don't even think twice. Don't even consider the PS5 DualSense Edge. Get this instead. It's so much better and you can map on the fly. If there's one thing I would say it's a bit of a con, I find the mapping is a little slow. I get it that you don't want me to make a mistake, but it's not as if it's like a random button you're gonna push out of anywhere. I wish the process was a little faster. It's the only thing, you know, when it comes down to it, it's faster to just hit your profile here than it is to remap here. But that you can do no matter what you're playing on. You can be on PC, you can be on PS5, you can remap as your heart's content. Very lovely as a PC replacement controller. I would recommend it. I really believe in this kit and in the future, I will not even reach out to them. I will buy the next kit because this is really a great product. If you're a PS5 player, I would still recommend this if what you're after is extra buttons. Liberating your thumbs, for example, to action those face buttons without having to get your thumb out of the uh, right analog. I think this is a better option. Not only do you have two but four buttons rather than having two on the DualSense Edge, but to me, it's just a more elegant way to approach it. The feel of the grip is superior. The haptic on this controller is superior. It's not gonna break the bank. To me, this is the better option. But again, if you're like a super duper pro controller and this is really what you're all about, well, then maybe you wanna go with this option. It's still a very good controller. Um, I couldn't stress this enough. I know I'm repeating myself at this point. If the grips were that much better, you know, if, if there were four buttons, if there were more features to it, it would make sense. But get this only if you know for a fact that you're gonna make use of those extra features because otherwise you're just, it's a bit of waste of money in my opinion. And there you have it guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you wanna watch the original hands-on which goes a little more in depth into just the controller itself, I'll put it up there. But other than that, I appreciate your support and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.